الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا وإمامنا محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد wanted to switch up a bit and give a general reminder to myself personally and to my brothers in Al-Islam regarding a statement that has come from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it is in that which is reported on the authority of Ubaid ibn Samit from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he said Man ahabba liqa Allah ahabu Allahu liqa'ahu wa man kariha liqa Allah kariha Allahu liqa'ahu that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said that whoever loves his meeting with Allah then Allah loves his meeting with him and whoever hates his meeting with Allah then Allah hates his meeting with him and it's mentioned that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha or one of his other wives said inna la nakrah al-maut she said oh Messenger of Allah indeed all of us we hate death we hate to die we dislike that we should you know we should die and pass away the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said laysa thalik he said that's not it that's not what we intend by this he said lakin al-mu'min idha hadarah al-maut بُشِّرَ بِرِضْوَانِ اللَّهِ وَكَرَامَتِهِ فَلَيْسَ شَيْءٌ أَحَبُّ إِلَيْهِ مَمَّا أَمَامَهُ فَأَحَبَّ لِقَى اللَّهِ He said that the believer, when death is present upon him, then he is given glad tidings of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah's nobility for him. So therefore, there's nothing more beloved to him than that which is in front of him. So therefore he loves his meeting with Allah. وَحَبُّ اللَّهِ لِقَاءَهُ And Allah loves his meeting with him. وَإِنَّ الْكَافِرْ إِذَا حَضَرَ بُشِرَ بِعَذَابِ اللَّهِ وَسَخَتِهِ وَكَارِهَ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ وَكَارِهَ اللَّهُ لِقَاءَهُ And indeed the, the kafir, the disbeliever, when death is present upon him, he is given the tidings of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah's displeasure. So therefore, he dislikes his meeting with Allah, and Allah dislikes his meeting with him. So this particular narration, it points to, and it highlights something that the Muslim should be in fear of. And that is that he should have fear of an evil ending. He should have fear of an evil ending. An explanation of this narration, Al-Hafid ibn Haji, he mentioned, narrating from Ibn Athir, he said, المراد بلقاء الله هنا المصير إلى دار الآخرة He said, what is intended by the meaning of Allah here is that journey which we are taking into the abode of the hereafter. وطالب معند الله وليس الغرد به الموت And the expectation of that which lies in store with Allah waiting for the individual. And it's not intended, يعني, uh, the mere death itself. Because everyone dislikes death. No one actually wants to die. He said this, so therefore the one who despises this dunya, he despises this dunya, and he hates it, and he abandons it, that this individual, he loves his meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He looks forward to that. وَمَنْ أَثَارَهَا and therefore the one who prefers this dunya and he builds and predicates his whole life upon it, this individual hates the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this individual, he hates to leave that which he built up and invested everything in to head towards something which he is, you know, he is uncertain of, which he is afraid of. Imam and Shabi, he mentioned, showing and highlighting to us how our salaf were, and how the righteous, particularly amongst them, were. 
how the righteous uh, amongst them, they had a fear of having an evil ending and they didn't feel secure or they didn't feel safe. He mentioned as Sha'bi that when Umar ibn al-Khattab anhu, when he was stabbed, when he was stabbed, Ja'a ibn Abbas anhuma, ibn Abbas, he came to him, فقال, he said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, aslamta hina kafir al-nas, wa jahadta ma'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hina khadaluhu al-nas. He said, O oh, chief of the believers, you embraced Islam when the people, they disbelieved. And you fought jihad along with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the people abandoned him. Well, and and now you have been killed as a shaheed. And this is when Omar ibn al-Khattab was stabbed by who, who stabbed him? Abu Lu'l al-Majusi. Abu Lu'l al-Majusi. Does anybody know the story just was a side benefit how, how the stabbing occurred, how it took place? No, it, it was uh, narrated and reported in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari that uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab, it was his habit to, in Salat al-Fajr, recite Surah Yusuf. He was, in, uh, he was reciting Surah Yusuf inside of the prayer, Salat al-Fajr, and Abu Lul al-Majusi was standing in the row. He was standing in the front rank. And he had a poisoned sword. And while Umar ibn al-Khattab, he was in the prayer, Abu Lul al-Majusi, he came out of the front row, and he stabbed Umar ibn al-Khattab. And then began stabbing the other Muslims that were there praying until he was subdued. And when Umar ibn al-Khattab anhu, found out who had stabbed him, well, the, uh, an amazing thing is that Umar ibn al-Khattab, after being stabbed, his concern was for what? For the prayer. So he grabbed who? Abdurrahman ibn Auf, pulled him to the front and told him to continue the prayer. Continue the prayer. And afterwards, Umar ibn al-Khattab, his concern was he wanted to know who it was that stabbed him. Who it was that stabbed him. And when he found out, he praised Allah. He said, Alhamdulillah, I praise Allah who has not allowed me to be killed by someone who claims to be Muslim. Abu Lulu, Abu Lulu, he was a kafir. He was a kafir. He was a disbeliever who was from amongst those uh, prisoners of war, uh, from the wars when they were fighting against the Majus. Now, so, when Omar he was stabbed, Ibn Abbas he came to him, and he, it was apparent that death was due, or that death was imminent, and death was upon him. And he came to him, giving him glad tidings of his virtues, mentioning some of his virtues. You embraced Islam when everybody else disbelieved. Nam, and you fought jihad along with the Messenger of Allah وسلم, when everybody abandoned him, and now you've been killed as a shaheed. He said, well, لَمْ يَخْتَلَفْ عَلَيْكَ اثْنَانِ And two people don't differ regarding you. I mean, everybody knows your virtues and, and, and how great you are. وَتَوُفِيَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَهُوَ عَنْكَ رَاضٍ And the Messiah of Allah died while he was pleased with you. He died being pleased with you. فَقَالَ لَهُ سُؤُمَا said to him, عَيْدْ مَقَالَتِ Say it again. Say it again. So, Ibn Abbas, he repeated his statement. So therefore, Umar, he said that al maghur the one who has been deceived, is the one whose own actions deceive him. He is deceived by his own actions. He said, Wallahi, lo anna li ma ta'alat alayhi shams, al gharibat He said, by Allah, if I had everything that the sun rose upon, or everything the sun sets upon, I will use that to ransom myself from that which is before me. Umar ibn al-Khattab. And he was promised Jannah by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fearing an evil ending. We weren't promised anything. So how much more so for us? Sufyan al-Tawri alayhi rahmatullah. One day Baka, he cried. Laylatan ila sabah. He cried at night. All the way up until morning. فَقِيلَ لَهُ was said to him, أَبَكَاؤُكَ هَذَا عَلَى الذُّنُوبِ He said, is this crying of yours due to your sins? Sufyan, he picked up a little bit of dust, a little bit of dirt from the ground. He said, الذُّنُوبِ أَحْوَنُوا مِنْ هَذِهِ He said, my sins, they're less than this. 
my sins are less than this. And more insignificant than this little about, uh, uh, amount of dirt that I just picked up and tossed. He said, إِنَّمَا أَبْكِي خَوْفِ الْخَاتِمَةِ He said, I'm crying because out of fear of my ending. Out of fear of what my life will end upon. Because this is something that we don't know. As we're going to see from a narration which we'll bring later in a short time. قال عطاء الخفاف He said ما لقيت سفيان إلا باكيا فقلت ما شأنك He said I never met Sufyan never seen him except that he was weeping and crying So what is wrong with you? Why do you cry so much? قال سفيان He said I'm crying because I fear that I shall be written in the book of those who are wretched. I fear that I shall be written in the book of those who are wretched. Sufyan Athari, Imam Ahl Sunnah of his, of his time, and we all know his virtues. Great Imam of Hadith, Imam of Ahl Sunnah. And, but this highlights and shows to us how the righteous are. How the righteous are. Those who, you know, their sins were less than ours. Their piety was more than ours. Their knowledge was greater than ours. Yet they feared an evil ending more than us. They feared an evil ending more than us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this out of his book. The eye which we are all familiar with, and we all hear quite often, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, ittaqullah haqqa tuqatihi, wa la tamutunna illa wa antu muslimun. O oh, you who believe have taqwa of Allah, as taqwa should be had of him. And do not die. Don't even die unless you're Muslim while you're doing it. Don't even die except in the state of Al-Islam. Even Masa'adi is said concerning this verse. He's had the amrun min Allah li'ibadihi al-mu'minin. This is the command from Allah to his believing slaves. And and that they have taqwa of him as taqwa should be had of him. And that they continue upon that and they, they affirm upon it and be upright upon that all the way up until death comes to them. Here's the shah. For indeed, the one who lives upon something, he will die upon that which he lived upon. He will die upon that which he lived upon. You want to die in a good state? You have to live in a good state. You have to live in a good state. And even then, the end result is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you want to give yourself a chance, you want to die in a good state, live in a good state. Live a good life. He said, فَمَنْ كَانَ فِي حَاسِحَتِهِ وَنِشَاطِهِ وَإِمْكَانِهِ مُدَاوَمًا لِتَقْوَى رَبِّهِ وَطَاعَتِهِ مُنِيبٌ إِلَيْهِ عَلَى الدَّوَامِ ثَبَتَهُ اللَّهُ عِنْدَ الْمَوْتِ وَرَزَقَهُ حُسْنُ الْخَاتِمَةِ He said that the individual who in the state wherein he has good health and he is active and he has the ability to do actions جزاكم الله he said he is in this state, he is constant in having taqwa of his Lord. And constant upon his, his obedience, turning to him in repentance always, Allah Ta'ala will make him firm at the time of his death and provide him with a good ending. And in the opposite of that is true as well. And the opposite of that is true as well. This is attested to, firstly, by that which we know. By that which we know. We know individuals who, as they say, live by the sword. They live that street life. And the, the end result comes about as a result of that which they were engaged in doing their life. Their death comes about as a result of that. But likewise, we want to mention to you two narrations. al half of al-Dhahabi, he mentioned, Rahimahullah, and Rajulan kana yujalis shurab al-Khamar. There was a man who used to sit Along with those who drunk khamar, used to drink alcohol. 
He says, فَلَمَّ حَضَرَتْهُ الْوَفَاءِ جَاءَهُ إِنسَانِ يَلْقِنُهُ الشَّهَارِ He says, so that, therefore when death was imminent and present upon him, someone came to him. Trying to make the talqeen, yani, as we are instructed to do with our dying, our deceased, yani, we go to them, we encourage them to say, La ilaha illallah. This is what we're instructed to do with our, yani, uh, our, our people who, 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 yani, who death is near to them. So the man came to him, instructing him to say, La ilaha illallah. But this man was one who did what? He used to sit with those who, who drank alcohol. So he was prevented from saying, La ilaha illallah, and all he was able to say, Ishra was spinny. All he was able to say was drink and pour me some. And then he died. Whoever lives upon something, he's going to die upon that which he lived upon. Al Hafiz, he also mentioned, Al Dahabi also mentioned, Rahimahullah, and this is inside of his book Al Kaba'ir. Inside of the book Al Kaba'ir. That a Rajulan, Mimman Kana, Yal'abuna shataranj. There was a man who used to play shataranj. It was chess, right? man used to play chess. He was addicted to playing chess. When he said, death had, uh, death had come to him. He was upon his deathbed. And it was said to him, Qul la ilaha illallah. Say la ilaha illallah. However, all he was able to say was, Shahik. Check me. Check me. That's all he was able to say. So, therefore, the statement of Tawheed was exchanged for him with the statement of check me. The kalima, the statement of Tawheed, was exchanged for him with this statement, check me. All going back to how it can show that the one who lives upon something, he would die upon that which he lived upon. And then we can all think of examples which are far worse than this. Which are far worse than this. It's a narration. comes on the authority of Sahla ibn Sa'id, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The Namashi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he had and he engaged the mushrikun in battle, and they were fighting. And so, the Namashi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was amongst his army, and amongst his, and amongst his companions. And other individuals, they were and he, on the battlefield, you know, mixing it up as they say. He said, Amongst his companions, yani they were all speaking about a Raju, one particular man. And this one particular man, yani it was said that everywhere he went in the battle, they observed this man striking down the Kufa. Everywhere they went, they saw bodies dropping. So this man was, as they say, putting in work. So they began to praise this man concerning his courage and how brave he was. And there's no one braver from us today than Fulan. That's what they said. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, This man is from the people of the fire. So the companions, they were amazed at this because they, they saw what they saw. They know that you know, all of the work this man was putting in. They were amazed at this. So they, be, they say, Oh, oh Messenger of Allah, you know, you know, this man, he's putting, up, he's putting all his work, as they say. He's doing all his actions, fighting this valiantly. How is he for the people of the fire? He repeated his statement. This man is from the people of the fire. So, قَالَ رَجُلٌ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ So a man from the companions, he said, I'm going to go follow this man to see. I'm going to follow this man to see why the message of Allah, so Salam, said what he said concerning him. He said, فَخَرَ جَمَعَهُ so he said, so this man, he exited with him. Every time the man stopped, he stopped along with him. And when the man hastened forth and moved about, he hastened forth with him. So the man, he caught a wound. The man, he was wounded in battle. With a, with a severe wound, it was a, a very harsh wound. فَاسْتَعْجَلَ الْمَوْتِ وَوُدِيَ نَصْلَ لَصَيْفِهُ سَيْفِهِ بِالْأَرْضِ He says, so therefore the man hastened death upon himself. He put the butt of his sword into the ground, put the blade between his two pectorals, and he pressed himself down upon it and committed suicide. 
He committed suicide, killed himself. Again, this uh, is uh, only an evidence against those individuals who want to commit suicide in battle, de deeming this affair to be permissible. Any suicide bombs in the likes of this. I mean, any text besides this would show the impermissibility of suicide. Because by way of this action, the Messiah of Allah said what he said concerning him. By way of his suicide, the Messiah of Allah said what he said concerning him. He's one of the people of the fight. Now, so, the man, he slid down upon the sword and killed himself like this. So the man, he went out, the man who had, had accompanied him, he went out to the Messiah of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَقَالَ أَجْحَدُ أَنَّكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ he said, I bear witness that you are the messenger of Allah. The Prophet he said, well, my God, who makes you say so? He said, so he narrated the story to him. I mean, concerning the man and exactly what happened. The messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, a statement which should scare everyone in this room. A statement which should scare everyone in this room. إِنَّ الرَّجُلْ لَيَعْمَلْ عَمَلَ أَحْلَ جَنَّةِ فِي مَا يَبْدُ لِلنَّاسِ وَهُوَ مِنْ أَحْلَ النَّارِ he said, a man will do the actions of the people of paradise and what is apparent to the people and what the people see. However, in reality, he's from the people of the hellfire. And a man will do the actions of the people of the hellfire and what is apparent for the people to see. In reality, he's from the people of Jannah. That actions are judged based upon their endings. It's all how you end. It's all about how you end your situation. So having an evil ending in Quran, it is of two levels. It is of two levels. The first level of having an evil ending, it takes place upon the heart of the individual. And when death comes, when the throes of death, when they come to the individual, and its terrors come to the person, he is afflicted with doubt in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is afflicted with doubt. When, when, once that death is imminent, he begins to doubt in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now. Or he rejects the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala altogether and his soul is taken away upon that. Upon shak billah. Upon doubting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the worst. This is the worst. Now, and so this will necessitate for the individual if he dies upon any shak billah, because shak is kufr. You doubt in the promise of Allah ta'ala, you doubt in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is kufr. So the soul is taken upon that. And this will necessitate for the person at, at, now that he shall be uh, within the fire forever. And the second type of evil ending, it is less than the first. It is that when death comes to the person, then he is afflicted with and his severe thoughts about that which he's leaving behind. And his family, his loved ones, this dunya that he built up. And he has an inclination towards that. And the desire for that. Now, he said, and the person uh, is known that he would die upon that which he lived upon. And we mentioned previous examples regarding that. Uh, death comes to the person. He used to be afflicted with, with you know, a love, severe love of chest. And so he begins to think about that. And it's all he can think about at the time of death. Can't think about anything else. And the other example we mentioned concerning the individual who used to drink alcohol. Constantly and sit with those who did so. Death came to him, that's all he could think about was what his heart was inclined towards in this dunya. Now, and death comes to him like that. So, therefore, the one who lives upon something, he will die upon that particular affair. <coughs> Evil ending in Quran, and we'll close with this it has asbab. Having an evil ending, it has reasons which will cause it to happen, which will cause you to have an evil ending. The first sabab, the first reason for an evil ending, it is the greatest of them, fasadul atiqad. Having, having a corrupt belief system, having a corrupt aqidah. Your creed is corrupt and incorrect. 
This is the first thing that will bring about for you an evil ending. For he who has a corrupt belief system, the effects of that will be apparent upon the person. They will be apparent upon the person. By Allah, you've seen this. You've seen this in the city of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in Medina. They have Rafidah there. Some Rafidah. And by Allah, you look at the face of the Rafidah there, they're ugly, they're dark, they're gloomy, they're ugly. From the effects of the Aqidah. You can see it on them. You can see the effects of the Aqidah upon them. So death comes to an individual while he has a corrupt belief system. And it's the first and then the greatest means which will bring about for that person the evil ending. The second is al-iqbal ala dunya wa ta'alluq biha. Is the person have an inclination towards the dunya and a strong attachment to it? He has a strong attachment to this dunya, and he spends all of his life, day and night, chasing after it, not giving Allah Taala his hukuk, his rights. Not giving his family their rights and the likes of this because he's chasing after this dunya constantly. This is the second reason which will bring about an evil ending. The third reason, the third sabab is turning away from al istiqama, turning away from uprightness. Turning away from goodness and guidance. Turning away from all of these affairs which will bring about for you an evil ending. Because yani, what else can there be after istiqama and khair except yani, wretchedness, sin, transgression. Turning away from all of these matters to turn towards sin, disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, transgression against Allah ta'ala set limits. All of these affairs which will bring about for you an evil ending. Wa minha and from them as well, al-israr al al an uh, individual being perpetual and constant upon disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the individual, if he is given to something for the entirety of his life, and he loves it, and he is connected to it, then that is the thing which will come to his mind when death comes to him. That is the thing that will come to his mind and be present within his mind when death comes to him. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all a good ending and to protect us from having an evil ending and to end uh, our lives upon his tawheed. wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barat ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam. Thank you. Al-Israr al-Mu'asi. There was, there was some notes that I compiled, but it was something from Tafsir Saadi. Tafsir Saadi.